As we continue our discussion of foundational concepts, it's important that we define some other geometric ideas before we can start to talk about velocities or accelerations. And so a key idea in this course is reference frames. Because when we talk about velocity or acceleration, we always have to ask the question, according to whom? And so that's what a reference frame gives us. So the definition of a reference frame qualitatively is it's a point of view from which observations are made regarding the motion of the system. So when we introduce vectors, we talked about position vectors. It's something that you're familiar with. But when dealing with velocity, we have to define the reference frame to begin with. So that means that every single dynamics problem that we work will start by explicitly defining the reference frame or reference frames. So what we have here is reference frame I, and it has an origin defined by point O, which tells us that point O is fixed within the reference frame I. And so here we see point P that's defined by this position vector of P with respect to O, and this is at time T. And let's say P moves to, the, to a new position. So here's our P. We now have a new position vector which is p with respect to o, but it's at a new time, at t plus delta t, which is the time that it takes, very small increment of time that it takes p to move from this point to that point. So what we see here is that we've now created a new vector. It's the velocity vector. And this is signifying that it's the instantaneous rate of change of the position vector of p with respect to o. And so velocities are always dependent upon the reference frame in which we observe them. So that means that we always need to define the reference frame in which we observe the velocities or accelerations. And in this case, we do that with a superscript, an upper left-hand superscript, that says we're observing this velocity in the I reference frame. Now, there'll be a lot more on that later, but just keep in mind that we always have to define that. And so in this instantaneous rate of change, we have the velocity of p with respect to o, as observed in the inertial reference frame, is equal to the limit as delta t approaches 0 of the change in position vector. So it's r of p with respect to o of t plus delta t minus r of p with respect to o at time t, and all that's divided by delta t. You guys have seen this before, I'm sure. And the notation for this is ddt, which is the time derivative, as observed in the inertial reference frame, of r of p with respect to o. And stated qualitatively, the velocity is the change in time of a position vector with respect to a particular reference frame. And so, in this case, our reference frame is I, and we'll also later on define that as the inertial reference frame. Now so far we've only dealt in geometric concepts. Each of these vectors, our position vectors, our velocity vectors, are all, have they have magnitude, they have direction, but it's only been geometry so far. But to actually work these problems we need to quantify them, and so we turn to coordinates. So a coordinate system is simply a set of scalars that locate the position of a point relative to another point within a reference frame. Recall that we operate and we live in three-dimensional Euclidean space. So to define the position of a single particle, we need a system of three coordinates. And this set of scalars is called the coordinate system, or a coordinate system, and there are multiple coordinate systems. Most often, we think about x, y, and z as coordinates. And we need to define what reference frame that these are operating in. Because these are scalars, x, y, and z, the time derivative is independent of the reference frame. And so that means that our time derivative dbt of x, of y, and of z is equal to x dot y dot and z dot. And when we put the subscript i, we're just saying that they're defined in within this reference frame. They're the coordinates in this reference frame. And so more importantly here, 
is that because our time derivative is independent of reference frame, we can observe that in any reference frame. And so that means that the time derivative of x will always be x dot, time derivative of y will always be y dot, and the same with z and z dot. And so this now defines speeds and is different than velocity because remember that velocity is a vector, meaning that it has a magnitude and a direction. In this case, because they're speeds, they only have magnitudes. And this leads us to our next working mathematical concept, and that's the idea of a state. So the state is the position and speed of a point within a reference frame at a given time. To completely describe the motion of a point, we need to know its position and the speed. And in three dimensions, this means that we need to know six parameters. We need to know uh, two for each dimension, a position and a speed for each dimension. So a position and a speed would be x and x dot, y and y dot, and z and z dot if we're working in Cartesian coordinates. And our last foundational concept is the equation of motion. Equations of motion in three-dimensional Euclidean space means that we have three second-order differential equations whose solution is the position and speed of the point as a function in time. So dynamics are inseparable from differential equations. In this case, they're second-order ordinary differential equations. And we base these differential equations on the laws of mechanics, um, you know, such as Newton's second law, which is F equals MA. Okay, remember F is a vector, a force is a vector, mass is a scalar, acceleration is a vector, and acceleration is dependent on the reference frame. So that means we have to define it within a particular reference frame. And so we use these laws of mechanics, Newton's second law, and we'll be covering these in the next lesson to then obtain our equations of motion. Our equations of motion are a mathematical representation of the system in which we can solve those equations to find the state. And so that's how all this is wrapped together. And so let's finish by categorizing each of these concepts as either a geometric concept or the mathematical representation of that geometric concept. So our first geometric concept that we defined were, were vectors. And so Vectors are a geometric idea, and then when we represent those with math, we represent those as coordinates, because remember, a coordinate is going to define one position with respect to the other, and then we can put that, that arrow in between. That's our vector, which has a magnitude and direction. Um, sec next, we have reference frames. So a reference frame is a geometric concept. And then there are multiple ways to define a single reference frame. And we do that typically with coordinate systems. Next, we have the geometric concept of motion, which is rooted in, mo which is rooted in geometry. And we can observe that. And we define the motion within coordinates and within coordinate systems using the state Recall that the state is the position and speed within a particular reference frame. And then our last geometric concept are simply the laws of mechanics. And then we take the laws of mechanics, and then we're able to determine equations of motion. And equations of motion we said our second order ordinary differential equations, which when we solve those ordinary differential equations, we're able to obtain the state of the system. But as we said earlier, we always start by understanding motion in terms of vectors, and then we start by defining reference frames, coordinate systems based on those reference frames. And so now that we have all these foundational concepts defined, we can start doing dynamics.